What's up divas and what's up divos? It's your girl April and of course you guys already know it is Wednesday so it is Real Talk Wednesday with me. So if you guys know on Wednesdays we go ahead and we dish out the tea or the advice that other divas may need and if you need some advice or you need a real talk, real talk topic subject about yourself or a situation, you can always send me an email at muffinismylovers2012 at gmail.com. Please make sure to put in the subject line, real talk. And if you want to change the name of yourself or your characters in the email, that would be awesome because then I don't have to do too much. So for today, the hair is the same. I've been wearing this hair again for like three weeks straight. Um, I love it. It's two and a half probably was way over two and a half years old but it's one of my favorites and so I've been wearing it again just gave me back that life and also I'm really happy to say that I got a new necklace from happiness boutique and I'll post the information for you guys below I did wear one last week from them and I love their website they have like the most gorgeous neck pieces available um, a lot of statement pieces but each item comes in this cute box and also some tissue paper and a little pouch this one here I forget the name of it but I will post a link link below and these you've seen before this is like a rose gold and it's a, a smaller necklace something small for me and the reason why I got this one is because it camouflages my scar which I'm really insecure about and sometimes um, so I try to find neck pieces that camouflage it some neck pieces are too big and too gaudy and it kind of irritates me so this one it doesn't camouflage it as much but it makes me feel comfortable so you know if you're interested in happiness boutique I'll post their information below they have loads of stuff and I love their they also have free shipping they do come from out of state or out of the country rather international so the good thing about it is you do get free shipping when you order from them yes I was sent this and I absolutely love it um, I have like a bunch of gorgeous necklaces from them and this one I like the most because it helps me just feel a little bit more secure about my scar it's not as noticeable because I have something right there and it's not irritating me their jewelry is costume jewelry of course but it doesn't fade um, quickly as other jewelry you may find does um, their pieces are really inexpensive and they just have really glamorous pieces along with earrings and bracelets and rings as well as that so yes you can check them out and I'll post all the information for you guys below so let's get on to this real talk Wednesday topic So this one here is an urgent one. This was um, put in as an urgent um, and it was given to me. Now let's see. I'm not really sure if she changed the name. So we're going to just call her Malika because I don't see any name change. Hey April, hope when this email gets to you that you and your family are in good health, physically and mentally. Thanks for reading this. I've been watching all your videos for months. I finally got the courage to write you. Please help. I'm only 16. This is a little lengthy, so please be prepared. I changed some names. Okay, so my story starts from last year, April. I was messing with this dude. Let's call him MW. He was a local gang member from around our way. Secretly, we messed around because I didn't want anyone to know I was into him. Within three weeks, we were a thing. MW took me on dates and bought me lots of stuff. We ended up sleeping together one day just out of the blue in May. He continued to sleep with, we continued to sleep with each other until one day the condom broke. I stopped texting him after that day. I stayed away from MW's house and hangouts. I took a break from everything and everybody then. I was walking one day and met this guy named Flea. I gave him my number and we started texting. We chilled and went out a few times and by, by the time August came, I was head over heels for Flea. We never had sex though. September came around, Flea and I were a couple. Still no sex. Everybody knew we were together, even MW. I lied to MW and told him I was single. We slept together after a date to a local buffet. I was really under the influence, so the night is kind of blurry with MW. September 26th, I found out I was pregnant. March 10th, my due date. I knew it was MW's because I never slept with Flea. I drove to see MW and I told him I was pregnant. He claimed he wasn't the father and I should get an abortion. I became a single young mom. Flea and I were still a couple. He knew it was MW's baby, but he stuck it out with me. 
October 1st, Flea was arrested. October 6th, I moved to Pennsylvania with my mom so I can get some help. I talked to Flea over the phone for some time, but we broke it off soon after. Months go by and I'm getting big and pregnant. School and work, school and work day after day. I go to the hospital sometime in early January. My mom's accompanying me. I get a direct message from MW's best friend, HB. HB tells me to call a number because MW wants to talk. I call the number and ask what he wants. From there, my life went even more downhill. He claimed he wanted his family. I laughed, but in the back of my mind, I think it's a good idea. We get to talk. We get to talking more that night, and we make it official a few weeks later. I plan a trip back to where MW lives for the weekend. We were fine, but his parents were a little weird and, no, and nosy. I enjoyed myself and left. Things got a little rocky when I got back home. He annoyed me every day. Fast forward to March 5th. MW was supposed to come to my house in Pennsylvania to await the baby. He never showed. March 7th at 10 p.m. he arrives with a duffel bag, a Dunkin' Donuts cup, and a phone in hand. Having reeked of weed, I'm his Dunkin' Donuts cup was was Arizona iced tea and liquor. Oh, in his Dunkin' Donuts cup was Arizona iced tea and liquor. My mom curses him out something horrible. I ate tacos and went into labor. We went to the hospital where my mom would meet us. 13 hours of hard labor, a late baby boy, Jay, arrived. BBJ was well and healthy. I attached a recent picture. My mom stayed long hours with me and MW at the hospital. MW stayed the three days in the hospital with me and showed no care in the world for our baby. We got discharged and MW went home. MW never did anything for my child, just used him as a trophy on Instagram and Facebook. I went to visit my grandmother who lives close to MW. I decided to go to MW's house. Um, BBJ, which is her baby, didn't like it there, so I called the cab to get back to my grandmother's house. MW choked me and insisted that I stay because his son, um, because of his son. I called my mother and told her what had happened, and she advised me to walk in the cold at 12 a.m., 12 a.m. midnight, to a location and wait on my uncle. I was getting ready to leave when MW pulled out two guns and said he would kill me, then himself, if I didn't stay. I ran quickly out that damn door with ba with the baby. That was the last time F MW ever saw our child. Months went by and still no support from MW. I filed for child support August 17th. That was the first court day where the judge told me he had to pay me $85 a week for our baby. He filed a motion to get it decreased. Next court date was October 12th where MW testified that he is 17 with no job and doesn't go to school. He doesn't want to pay because he has doubts about um, our baby being his child. He was granted 60 days to find a job and to get a DNA test. Please give me some advice. Am I wrong for not letting MW see BBJ, our baby? Am I wrong for putting him on child support? Help, please. So Malika's whole scenario is this. By now she's 17. She got pregnant when she was 16 to some gangbanger. And I'm just going to call him a gangbanger because he was a young kid um, selling drugs, running the streets, not going to school, carrying around guns. You know, she had sex with him. Things happened. She ended up getting pregnant. She did meet somebody else named Flea, who she's calling Flea. However, Flea got arrested. She's never had sex with him, but he stuck it out with her for a while until she moved to Pennsylvania. And then they kind of like broke it off. So here's the scenario. She's in Pennsylvania. She's back and forth visiting family and MW, wherever they were living at. And when the time comes to have her baby, her baby father comes to the hospital, really doesn't pay much mind to him. I guess it's just a, basically a popularity thing for her boyfriend or her baby's father to showcase their baby on Instagram and Facebook. He doesn't pay child support. When she went to visit him while visiting her grandmother, she took the baby and he pulled out a gun on her, the baby, and said he'll kill her, the baby, and himself. And does she feel, and she's asking me, is she wrong for putting him on child support and not allowing him to see her baby? First of all, Malika, I'm going to tell you this much. You're 17 by now. And having a child is like a freaking job in itself. A, a child is like a job. You don't never get a break. Well, at least with a job, you get a day off. With a baby, you don't get a day off, okay? You just don't get a day off. So, unfortunately, you had a baby at a young age. But, luckily, you have family members to help you. You're going to school. You have a job. I hope you have a job now. But... 
going back and forth with somebody who doesn't have any potential in life is really not willing to have any potential is not really concerned about school and then on top of that he's pulling out guns and shit on you threatening your life man please first of all me personally i wouldn't even worry about no child support from a low life like that because with child support you got to have ties to the kids sometimes you know what i'm saying you can get an order of protection where they don't be um they're not able to see your child but they you still receive child support however with me personally if that was me and someone pulled out a gun on me and so they were going to kill me and my baby and themselves if I leave I'm going to get away from you as fast as possible and I'm going to have nothing at all to do with you ever again I could care less about your two pennies or two nickels rubbing together to send me for the baby I'm fine like for real my life and my baby's life is way more important than getting a child support check and that's just how I feel some people take things the wrong way he could feel like oh you're taking me to court for child support I don't know if it's my baby he's already pulled a gun out on you he's a gang banger who knows who he knows you know what I'm saying so for one everybody deserves their children to be taken care of it takes two people to make a baby and yes even if you're not together you deserve to get child support however you don't deserve to be brutally physically and mentally abused by anybody by no means necessary and that's just my take on it i don't really care what age you are these young guys today and these young girls think that it's so cool to be in a relationship at the young age of 16 15 16 17 when you really don't know anything about life in general you really don't know yourself because you're still a teenager and teenagers are all sometimes a little wacky they're a little bit off key so having a relationship is a little bit difficult me personally if it were my kids you're not going to be in a relationship with anybody and so you can at least show me that you're responsible in school you're responsible with your grades you're responsible with your books you can get yourself a job and you're responsible in the home there's no need for a relationship at 16 years old you really shouldn't have been having a relationship and i'm pretty sure your mom didn't condone it but yes we do go out and sneak around i have been young once and i have snuck around with my boyfriend who my mother hated and he too was a drug dealer you know i grew up in the projects and that's not an excuse to grow up in the projects but that's where i met him so of course my life was a little bit different from those who lived in the suburbs living in nice houses and big ass houses and parents that were well to do you know the guys that i met were in the projects or on the streets where I lived at, where the neighborhood was tough. Yeah, I did grow up in Queens, but trust and believe, it's nothing like here in Arizona. But back in the day when I was a kid growing up, they were not as violent as they are today. So when these teenagers get in these relationships, they think that it's cool to have sex, it's cool to have babies, you know. That's the one thing that I really like, oh, it drives me crazy, to see these little girls, 13, 14, 15, 16, pushing strollers down the street. It's one thing to push a stroller if it's your little sister, but it's another thing when they're pushing a the stroller at this young age, you don't even know how to wipe your own ass properly. So what makes me think that you could wipe or take care of a little baby? You are a baby in yourself, you know what I'm saying? So... I think it's really important for parents or mothers to put their daughters on some type of birth control because we cannot always hold their hands. We cannot always be there when mentally, meaning when we cannot always be there mentally when we're not physically there, meaning you instill something in your child and you tell them, don't go out and get pregnant. Use protection. We cannot always be there. You know what I'm saying? We have lives to live. We have jobs to do. We have home to take care of. So we want to instill these values and morals in our child's head before they go out into the world. But sometimes it doesn't really work. They get around their friends and peer pressure is a motherfucker. Okay. It's just really a motherfucker. And sometimes things are done just because of peer pressure or I want to feel cool. I want to be just like the rest of these girls. I want to, I want people to respect me, but Teenagers these days have like total different morals and values as when I grew up. Um, I see teenagers these days, they're young, 14, 15, 16. They have no respect for themselves, so why would they have respect for their elder? They stand outside, they're cursing at people, they're cursing at adults, they're cursing at elder people. They have no respect. They're half-assed dressed. They don't want to do anything. They just think that being disorderly is cool, and that's how I get my reputation. That's how I get my rep, is by being disorderly or pushing a stroller. Now, for one Malika MW he's bad news he's still young and hopefully he could turn his life around because he's still young and he's got his whole life ahead of him however if he's in the streets and he's toting around guns or what have you I don't really see his future getting too bright unless he's going to jail there's no way sometimes it's hard for them to just turn around and say you know what I'm gonna do a total 180 360 and I'm gonna change my life because this baby is here now me personally 
if my baby father was acting like that all crazy, got guns and shit, I don't want to be around you, and I damn sure don't want none of my kids to be around your crazy ass. I'm just saying. You know what I mean? So, child support, that's cool. Get your child support. <clears throat> However, do you really think that he's going to look for a job within 60 days and get a DNA test? He doesn't have the money to get a DNA test, and he doesn't probably have the skills to get a job. He's 17. He probably dropped out of school a while ago. So I'm pretty sure that he doesn't have a resume or any type of job experience because he's only 17 years old. So, yeah, get your child support. It's all needed. But sometimes things that are needed just are not needed. Like the bullshit and the hassle and the nonsense that you got to deal with with this person just to get a few dollars from them to take care of your kid. $85 a week may not be a lot to some. I wish I got child support for one of my kids, but however, I didn't get a damn red cent. I did get $16.32 every two weeks for my oldest daughter. However, what was that supposed to do? At a point in my t life, I was just like, please, I don't even want that shit. You know what I'm saying? Because I got to deal with you. You're a liar. You just lie and lie, 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 lie. And I really don't have time to deal with the nonsense. So to alleviate myself in a headache, I'm just going to pass on your child support check and I'm going to continue my life. Because $16.32 twice a month is really not helping me or my daughter. We can't even go to McDonald's with that. Or maybe we can, but what are we going to do with the rest of the change? It's only like a buck or two. I'm just saying, you know, with this type of person and with the experience that you went already through with him, just be happy that your mom is there helping you and you have family members to help you. You really don't need his help. You don't need your son to get any type of... You just don't need your son to be in any type of relationship with this young man. Because in the long run... What could your baby father teach your baby right about now, okay? He can't really teach him nothing. And if he does turn his life around in the long road, then good for him. Kudos to him. But would you really want your baby to be hanging out with some kind of little drug dealer, gangbanger? You really don't know who the fuck is out to get your baby father. And why have your baby involved in any extra bullshit and drama when it's not even needed, you know? The teenagers of this world today, there are some really good teenagers, and then there are some that just are just like, why? Like, there, I've seen some teenagers where I would just like to lock them in a fucking basement or dungeon and just work them like slaves and let them know the meaning of hard work and the meaning of life. A lot of these kids today, they got it so easy. They got all these gadgets. They got all these shoes and apparel and jewelry, and their parents just make it so easy for them. But growing up, like myself, growing up as a kid, I didn't get name brand sneakers. I wore these sneakers called balloons, okay, until I was in like the 8th or ninth grade, all right? Called balloons. And every day I would go to school and people would make fun of me. And, you know, I felt some type of way. I really did. And I, I just really didn't want to be an outcast to people. But... I was kind of like an outcast. My mom, she worked hard. She really couldn't afford much, but she worked hard. And I didn't have the luxuries that a lot of other kids had, but I'm so thankful for that now because I know what it is to work hard and get what you need to get in life. It ain't all about what everybody's wearing, what the Joneses got on, what you doing. I could care less what you doing over there down the block or next door to me. I don't really care what kind of car you drive. It's not my concern, you know what I'm saying? So many of these teenagers, they try to be just like everybody else. They fantasize and they see what's on TV and they try to be just like everybody else. Or they see these young girls on Teen Mom and shows like that and have these babies and think that it's like a cup of soup. When that shit is hard as hell. Like I have five kids and a grandson. Two grandsons. And I watch my baby grandson who's 10 months old. I watch him every day. And no, I've had five kids. Let me tell you something. Sometimes... While I'm watching him, I just want to have peace and I don't want to be bothered because I've already done my time, meaning I've already raised my kids. I've already raised my last baby who's eight. I don't want to go back to changing diapers and crying. And, and those are the days when I feel like that sometimes. And that's just probably because I have a bad day. However, when I am with my grandson, you see me all on Instagram with him. I post him up. I take him with me wherever I go because I enjoy him so much. But I will tell you this. At the end of the day, he goes with his mama. He goes home to his mama. And I have my time. 
but I know what it's like to raise a child and to raise children. So I've been there and done that. And even though he's not mine, sometimes it, it is a little overwhelming to me because I haven't been through that in such a while that, you know, it's a new thing for me. But I embrace it and I'm able to deal with it because I've already went through it and I'm able to cope. I'm more mature. I can deal with the baby. But then we have these young kids that can deal with life in general with themselves and they want to have these babies so they could be like their friends. Okay, and I don't really think it's cool. And then they got these dumbass little boyfriends who ain't about shit. And I would not even want anybody in the world to know that that is my baby father. You got a gang banger who don't even go to school as a baby father. Now, how's that sit with you? My advice to you, Malika, is to leave his ass the fuck alone, okay, on some real shit. Leave him the fuck alone. He is not worth your time. If he can choke you up and he can pull out weapons on you and your child, he don't give a fuck about you just as much as he don't give a fuck about his own self, his own self. Because if he really cared about himself, he wouldn't be in the streets. And if he had to be in the streets, he would at least go get an education so he wouldn't have to spend a lifetime in jail or a lifetime on the streets or a lifetime struggling. So just take my advice. Child support is a lovely thing. But sometimes you got to leave shit alone just to get ahead in life. And with that, I mean, leave some child support and that child support check alone just so that you can have a peace of mind and raise your child in peace. Because sometimes with child support comes visitation rights. And sometimes with those visitation rights, you just don't want to be fucking bothered with the dude because you already know the outcome and you already know what type of person he is. So to alleviate all that bullshit, get yourself a job if you haven't gotten one already or you haven't went back to work already and take care of your baby the way the best way you can i never give a man too much to where he can say well i did this and i do that for you you know what i mean because i'm not about to i'm not about to i don't like people saying oh i did this for you or i did that for our baby no nah. oh i watched the baby i could do without you know what i mean yeah i would like to get checked from you but you know something in the long run i could do without you're not about to give me and my kids no fucking headache and especially if you some goddamn low life scumbag baby bye for real. Tell Malika what you think about her situation and what would you guys do. I will tell you this. She sent me a picture of her little baby boy and he is the cutest little thing. He seriously is. He is the cutest little thing. You know, they, they grow so fast. So love him while you can and leave all the headache behind. Because let me tell you something. That baby is going to grow before you know it. And the way I used to feel... When I was pregnant with my last baby, my husband was in jail. And my mumsy, she's eight now. When she was born, she took away all the pain and loneliness from him not being there. And from that moment on, I was kind of like a changed person with her. You know what I mean? Because of her. So children can take on a big role in your life. They can make you and they can break you. But you just realize that they are going to love you unconditionally. Some of them. Some of them may not. Alrighty, so this is the second one. Okay, hey girl, y'all. My hey girl, hey y'all. My name is Risa. I've been watching, and she changed her name. I've been watching since your. I've been watching since your last channel, and I am a faithful viewer. I've been wanting to email you for a while, but never had the courage. Today's the day I spilled the beans. Maybe a little lengthy. So I was dating a sorry motherfucker for a year and thought we loved each other. He repaid me by fucking an 18-year-old slut the same night he met her. Mind you, he introduced me to her as his girl slash she's also been fucking all of his friends. As she ends up pregnant, and she ends up pregnant, he believes that the child was his until he found out she was fucking around. He confronts her and then the nasty bitch got scarred and had an abortion. Oh, excuse me. And the nasty bitch got scared and had an abortion after she was confronted by him. Of course, we broke up. I was heartbroken and ended up fucking a friend I've known for two years. Eight years older than myself. He also has no kids. On the night of my birthday, drunk and high off of weed only, we maintained our friendship and all but he desperately wanted to be my man. I said no many times because I had thought I, thought I had options. Laugh out loud. I really did like our time spent together, but wasn't ready. However, he's a good man. I mean, a good ass man. He works full time at DHL, has a car, his own place and all that. So seven weeks later, I found out I find out I'm pregnant. By this time, I'm moving to Edmonton for a year to live with mom and dad to get my life together and take a year off of college. He's back in Toronto. 
I call him to let him know that I'm pregnant and he's excited. But he wants to move in and all that jazz. I don't have any more family in Toronto. So that's why I moved to Edmonton to have the baby and get settled for a year before I moved back to Toronto to finish college. Throughout this process, he claimed to have been blackmailed into a relationship with a crazy ex that was present at a crime he committed and often threatens to call the police. Yes, a grown-ass desperate woman. Every time he tried to leave her, she threatened him. He already had a long record from five years ago. He eventually told her I was pregnant and that he wanted to be with me. And she calls the police and sends him to jail. He gets out on $2,500 bail, but now is even more serious about being with me. I've grown to love him even though he pisses me off, but he really wants to marry me. Get a house and raise our future daughter due in January. Together as a family when I'm back in Toronto. Next September to finish school. I really want this for us, but I always feel like he's not being honest. He hasn't left my side, but it's just a feeling I get. A man could always change his mind, and I want to know, should I risk going into debt as I will be in school full-time with a baby, or bite the bullet, move in with him, and try things out while he's willing to help and support? Sorry this is a long-ass email, but I'm really confused about my feelings, especially since my baby will be involved in this. I love you, baby girl. Thanks in advance. So, Risa, first of all, I like the ending. She said, I love you, baby girl. Someone else used to call me that, and I just love to hear that. So, Risa has, um, obviously, she's not in the States, but she is pregnant. She went back home to live in Toronto with her mom and dad just to take off from a year from college. And she ended up pregnant by a friend that she's been knowing for two years because they slept together. However, she did have an ex-boyfriend who, who is a nasty motherfucker because... He done went and had sex with some 18-year-old slut that got pregnant and had an abortion. So she broke up with him, which is the smart thing to do. But she did end up sleeping with one of her good friends that she's known for quite some time, who's eight years older than her, works for DHL, which I love because when they ring my doorbell, which they did today and brought me two packages, uh, um, they get good benefits. But he also has his own place, his own car, his a job. He got a bank account, probably, so that's one of the good things, okay? However, his ex-girlfriend, her baby father, her boo, his ex-girlfriend probably committed some type of crime with him a few years, a while ago, like five, six years ago. And so she's trying to blackmail him to be with her still or else. If you don't be with me, I'm going to call the police. So he did let her know that Risa is pregnant with his baby, and I guess he finally has gotten away from this strange, crazy, desperate, lunatic bitch, okay? But she wants to know, what should she do? Should she bite the bullet and go in debt, or should she move back in with him? Now, but she does care for him. He wants to marry her. He's by her side. He gets on her nerves. Let me tell you something, Risa. You ain't the only female that got a man that get on their nerves, okay? And I'm just going to say it just like that. Trust and believe me when I tell you, you are not the only one. I am one of those, okay? I'm a very wishy-washy person, and I like my space. So if you are around me too much, I get aggravated, and I really don't want to be bothered for too long. So I, I like my space. So trust and believe me, I have had plenty of those moments where mine has gotten on my nerves, and I really wish that he would find something to do or to go somewhere just away from me. So, yes, I look forward to the nights when he goes to work because then I have my space and I don't have to be bothered, okay? However, now, you said you moved to Toronto to be with family and take a break from school. Now, I'm going to tell you this much. Never give up your education and your career for nobody. I don't care if it's man, female, child. You cannot give up your career, okay? A career is going to leave your life stable. However, this young man seems like he's got something going on well for himself, except for the fact that he's got this crazy-ass female who's jumping the gun with all types of threats and attacks and attacks on his character and shit like that. Now, here's the thing. If she did the crime with him, why is he the one that's going to jail? He need to put her ass in jail, too. 
get a restraining order against this crazy bitch and let her know if you keep continually calling me and harassing me, I'm going to put you in jail. Because y'all bitches can go to jail too. Don't think and believe for one second that you can call up somebody and harass them and think that, oh, because I'm the female and he's a man, I can't go to jail. Because your ass can go the fuck to jail too. Trust and believe I've been there, not for harassing, but for fighting my ex-husband. I've been there, you know, I split his head open. So I've been there. We we get to, we gets the cuffs on too, and we get to go behind the bars as well. And trust me when I tell you, it is not a happy place back there in the prison cell. No, okay. Can't wear makeup. Can't wear weave. Can't wear wig. You know, ain't really looking your best. However, he's by your side. Your baby is due in January. My grandson's birthday, January second, and my other grandson's birthday, January twelfth. So, your baby is due in January, and you want to be with him. I'm pretty sure you want to be with him because who doesn't want to be with the father of their child if they are worth it, okay? However, when we end up pregnant by this person, we always want the best. We always see the white picket fence, or not even the white picket fence, but we see some type of family values, okay? Now, take, for instance, the scenario before this. This young lady, Malika, she don't need to be with her baby father because he's, he's nobody. He's unimportant. He's just not an important species right now or a person. He's just a waste of flesh and bones. Now, you have someone like Risa who's got a man who's got a car, a job, a place to live. You know, he's by her side. However, she did say men lie, and they can talk a damn good game, okay? They can talk a damn good game. But here's the thing. They are only going to talk a good game if you allow them to and you feed into that bullshit. Now, I've heard a lot of game talkers and I've heard, oh, I'm going to do this for you, baby. And you're going to be my girl and I'm going to spoil you and I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that. Negro, please. Okay, I already know what you want and I have the same goal as you to get what you got. I'm not really concerned about your agendas or all of your hidden lies or your this bold-faced lies okay what you can do for me and what you're gonna do for me and my kids please men do talk a real good game so sometimes it's a little bit hard for those people to see through it especially when you're vulnerable at a time like you are right now when you're pregnant what I tell everyone take what they say as a grain of salt however you guys have been friends for a certain amount of time before you got pregnant to him and slept with him so you should know him to the point where you can trust him you know think about the things that you guys share together think about the things that he's done think about his past relationships if you know of any of his past relationships you know what i'm saying look into what he's into find out what the crime is that he's done with this ex-girlfriend if you know of it already and if it's not like a humongous crime where he's killed somebody then try to give him the benefit of the doubt because it's always nice when you can find yourself a nice gentleman like you said and she put it in bold capital letters good ass man so here's the thing where are you gonna find those at there are some out there. There are quite a few. There are quite many of them out there. However, some of them you come into play and you think he's a good ass man and it just be his representative talking to you. You know, until you get in good, he done got you swept off your damn feet. You done bumped the back of your fucking head and you walking around walking in snow with no shoes on because you that in love and you feel like you can just conquer all. That's when their representatives cease and desist and there's no more representatives. You got the real motherfucker right now. That's when you got the real motherfucker. And then you like, this nigga crazy. I'm really not trying to fuck with him no more. This nigga really, really, really crazy. He is not what I'm interested in. Those are the type of dudes that you got to be careful of. Be very leery of where, where you met them at. However, you've known this person already. And you guys had a friendship. And it's always nice to have a friendship before a relationship with somebody. Because then you get to know them. And then you have an option. Then you can decide whether I want to fuck with you or not. I don't even know if I want to be your friend anymore. If I see your real true representative or your real true self. So when you have a friendship with somebody. 
a friendship is a lot better than a relationship in the beginning because if you're just friends and you guys have no intentions on being together that's not the agenda you just are friends you're kicking and you're chilling then you can see them for their real selves because you're their friend you're like their bestie they're letting you in in their world they're telling you certain things that they would never tell their girlfriend you see them out and about you see how they act in the real world you see them for who they are unlike a relationship that you just jump into you never know this person really you just know their representative they could lie between the sheets and then go home to their fucking family down the street you just don't fucking know so friendships build a relationship and i think that it's so cool when you can see a man and a woman and they'll be like oh we were best friends for like 10 years before we we even slept together or before we had a relationship those be the ones that be lasting because they've been friends already and they've shared so much and they really got to know the person and if you are my friend and i know that you grind me and you scandalous we can still be friends however i ain't trying to fuck with you like that i've already seen this side of you so i already got the red flag up like okay um no thank you i don't want to sleep with you but we can still remain friends because i already know how you get down so that's what's good about having a friendship before you have a relationship because you get to know this person you know who they really really are and they ain't got a front for you you know what I'm saying? They really ain't got a front for you. You done seen who they dated before. You done seen how they act up. You done seen how they turn up. You done seen where they work at. You done seen and you know how their family is. If they're lazy, if they're thieves, if they're drug dealers, if they're crackheads. You know about them because this is your friend. But when you just jump into a relationship, you don't know a goddamn thing about the person because they can lie like I said, between the sheets and then when they done, take their ass home to their family down the street. Okay, so my thing and advice for you is to take it one step at a time. Don't go in debt and not finish school because you already started something. So finish it because you need an education and you having a baby and your baby needs a mother who has an education and can get a good job and take care of them. You know what I mean? And you having a little girl. So look forward to that and share that experience with your child's father and your boyfriend. Yeah, he gets on your nerves probably gets on your nerves a little bit more so now because you're pregnant and he's probably being attentive and loving and sometimes that could be overwhelming to us because trust me I get it I know it for a fact sometimes I'm not so affectionate and I don't want all that emotion and and lovey dovey shit I just want you to get the fuck out of my face like seriously just please leave me alone because I'm not really an emotional person like that when it comes to a relationship and it's probably because I've been through so much in a relationship that I just have my guard up and a red flag up all the time. And I'm always on guard because I'm not about to let you or allow you to tear me or my kids down in any way, shape, or form. But, Risa, finish school. If your schooling is in um, Toronto where your parents are at finish your school if it's where your boyfriend is at who is the father of your child go back to school and finish it and split and split the bills and see how it works out because you can't knock it until you try it sometimes and like you said if he's a good ass man then why not give him the benefit of the doubt and give him a try and see how it goes you're not committed. He wants to marry you, but nobody says you have to get married. It's not written in stone that you got to get married today, tomorrow, next year, or the year after. Me personally, I have my boyfriend. I call him my husband, but we're not married. And I call him my fiance. However, I just got divorced in May. May 11th, five days after my actual wedding anniversary. And do I want to get married to anyone again? anytime soon no honestly I don't nobody wants to grow old alone everybody wants companionship we all want to be in a relationship we all want to be loved and that's fine and dandy too however I am not ready to get married I'm not ready to be committed on a piece of paper because I really don't think that it's necessary I don't think that it's needed you know what I'm saying because you could be married to me and do some dumb fuckery shit to me anyway paper or not so it's to me I think after all my experience it's just a piece of paper and also like living together the living together situation it's really taking a toll on me okay it really is taking a toll on me because 
Um, I haven't lived with anyone in over two and a half years, two and a half, almost three years. So it's taken a toll on me and it's really starting to stress me out because I need my space and I like the way that I do things and how I do them and when I do them. And so, yes, that is taking a huge toll on me. And it does take a lot to get used to, so I'm not really sure how how long I'm going to allow myself to be stressed out with this, meaning I'm not really sure how long I'm going to live with my boyfriend um, or he live here with me. I think sometimes a relationship is always good when you live it's, you live in separate places, you know. You got your place and I got my place. Come over and see me like twice a week because you got to go to work and I'm busy. So I'm not saying sit up underneath me and be with me all day long because you don't have to do that. You know what I'm saying? To show your love and affection. You can call me. You can text me, what have you. Um, I'm just one of those people who need their space. So, yes, the whole living situation, living together, has really taken a toll on me and has allowed me to see that being in a relationship is good and it's great, but... There are some boundaries, meaning the door that you open to get inside. I need that to just be for me. And then you have one just for you <laughs> somewhere else. Um, and that's just how it is for me. And unfortunately, you know, that's just how I feel. Um, but I try. I do try. You know, we have our moments where we clash because I like the chair like this. And you like the chair like that. And the chair been like this the way I liked it for the past two and a half years. And I ain't about to change the way the chair is positioned for your ass because this is my shit. This is how I be feeling. But anyway, so let Risa know what you think as well as Malika. And girls, you already know, you can always send me an email at muffinismylovers2012 at gmail.com. Make sure to put in the subject line, Real Talk, so that way I can hook you up with some advice. And if you want a wig, a unit, a wig made, or you want one that's already in stock, you can always check my website out at gonewiththewindwigs.webly.com, and I'll post that for you below, as well as check out Happiness Boutique. I will also post their information for you guys below. And as always, stay diva and divalicious, and make sure you rate, comment, subscribe. Send your friends over, send your grandmother over, send your mother over, send your dog, your uncle, your brother, your cousins whoever, send them over to watch my channel. So on that note, I'll see you guys on my next video.